Aloha everyone, Jonathan here coming to you live from the North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii and I wanted to share a really unique experience, something happened um, that is kind of an interesting omen. I think it's a good omen and um, as a uh, conscious activist and spiritual practitioner, a metaphysician on a mission over the years, I've, I've always sought to expand my capacity as a practitioner um, to be able to sort support my clients in the many, um, many different types of, uh, dynamic spiritual experiences that people go through. And, um, over the years, you know, I, I was ordained, uh, when I was 24, uh, as, as a minister in a non-denominational, uh, church, which was basically more or less just me wanting to constantly be expanding my capacity as a practitioner. Um, also getting, you know, getting, uh, on the path of Reiki energy healing, um, and, and continuing my path researching in you know quantum physics and neuroscience and the science of spirituality and so today what I want to share with you is a story that happened an actual synchronicity um, involving spirits and involving um, you know actual signs and and really interesting uh, proof that I have in photos and and videos and I want to share that with you today and um, I'm, I'm sharing this with the intention of just, wow, like what a beautiful synchronicity, what, a, what an incredible story um, and, and, and feeling so blessed um, to be able to do this work and to, to be able to, you know, run my business in this way. And, and it's, it's, it's really like, you know, you, uh, are engaging with the spiritual realm while doing business. And that opens up doors and, and, and allows for more energy to flow, um, more prosperity to, uh, be, uh, created and generated. So, um, this story takes place here in Hawaii and, uh, many of you probably don't know, but I've been working on developing a project that involves an organic farm. Um, farming is extremely important right now, especially considering what's going on with the health of our planet, um, and, uh, the importance of becoming food sovereign, you know, importance of taking control of our food sources, our health, our vitality. And, um, and so, yeah, so I, I was, uh, I got here to Hawaii and I wanted to go and check out the property, um, one of the p potential properties that we're looking at. And so I, I went to the land and, and actually the land is next to a cemetery. And when I first saw that, I was like, whoa, I don't know, like what's going on with this land? Is this land like, you know, it's clearly when you look at it on a map, I mean, it's a beautiful piece of land. And it's like, this is clearly a sacred space. So, you know, we wouldn't want to like do or create anything that would, you know, disrupt that type of energy. But there is a clear line and a clear, you know, rock wall between the cemetery and the land itself. Uh, but still, you want to, you know, you want to respect that energy and that history. So, I went down to the beach um, where this beachfront location is, and I um, I I saw the property. There it was, beautiful beachfront headland, gorgeous, stunning white sandy beaches, and uh, and I was about to go, and then I was like, you know what? Before I go to this land to walk the land, I'm gonna go to the cemetery first, and I'm going to just you know pay tribute to that space and to this land and to the people that came before me. So I went on my bike and I rode over. It was 7 a.m. First, you know, first light was breaking through the, the clouds. And as I walked onto the, um, into the cemetery, the beautiful green grass, uh, I started to see the, the, um, the gravestones and, you know, looking at the dates and the names. And these were all the way back in the 1800s. So this is a very old sacred space. And um, I walked out and um, as I was walking out, the sun rays were shining through the sky onto the ground. It was so beautiful. And I was remembering when I was a kid and I used to say, hey, mom, look, God is bringing the dead people up to heaven. And she would say, no, honey, those are spirits, you know. And, and so, um, so I just was remembering that. And in that moment, I pulled out my phone and um, and I recorded this uh, this video, and I'm going to show you some videos today. Um, and uh, and let's see if we can all photos. Cool. All right. So um, so basically, I pull out my my phone, and I take this uh, this photo here. And I'm showing the rays. You can see the rays there, and I'm showing the burial site, and. Um, 
and yeah, so I was just kind of walking around, but like showing the, and then this right here, this little vortex, you can see it, there's no graves right there. It's just a clear open space. Um, so I walk into this open space. You can kind of see it, you know, right there. And I walk to that open space and, uh, and then I, I, I walk out there and, and basically I, 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 I bend my knees down to the ground and I put my hand on the ground and as a practitioner, as a shaman, as a minister, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trained in, in the power of prayer. And prayer is powerful because, you know, prayer is when we talk to God. They say meditation is when we're listening to God, to spirit, to source, whatever it is, you, divine intelligence, whatever you want to call it. But I call it God. So I, I, I put my hand on the ground and I, I say, you know, basically right now in this moment, give so much gratitude for this land. Thank you, Mama Gaia. Thank you, Mother Earth, you know, giving gratitude for being here for, you know, this gift and this blessing of life. Uh, right now in this moment, I ask permission of this land to begin exploring, uh, to doing this work. And if it is in the will of the Most High, if it is in the will of God, let the angels and the ancestors guide this work calling in the ancestors asking their permission to do this work uh calling in the spirits and higher dimensional beings calling in the angels you know of the sacred i mean i'm in a cemetery right like this is a legit you know sacred ceremony going down i got my hand on the earth and and so I'm, I'm calling this energy through and and i was asking for the guidance of of the spirit realm in this project and so in that moment, I felt, you know, well, what if, you know, this is the logical mind. Well, what if there was a spirit that, that wouldn't want, you know, like, what if this was like not in alignment for one of the spirits? Like they were up there in their heavenly realms and they're like, one of them's like, eh, I don't know if I want, you know, a, you know, a wellness center, an organic garden over here, like I don't, blah, 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 you know? And, and, and I, in that moment, I felt compassion for the potential of a spirit that was in a discordant um, vibration, right? That was not in, in alignment with the highest vibration of creation. And I felt that. And I said, and I just felt it. I felt compelled. I said, right now, Lord God, if there are any spirits that are feeling stuck on this land or any spirits that are, that are trapped here, Right now in this moment, we ask that those spirits can be liberated, that they can be set free, that their souls can be healed and renewed and, and liberated into the infinite. And so I just asked that prayer. And then I stood up and I walked back to my bike and I rode over to the, to the property and I went and walked the property. And um, I pulled out my phone at another point and I, I, I took a video of, of the property and, and, you know, and just checked it out. And it was beautiful space, really, really grateful to see it. And wow, oh my gosh, so beautiful. And, um, and then I get home and I open up my phone to look at the photos and I find something very interesting about the photos and the videos in my phone. So let's see if I can take you guys here. Let's see, boom. Uh, so we're gonna go here, all photos. Okay, so check this out. So you see all these weird random photos, right? Like what's going on there, right? What happened? So so let's just start, take it from the top. So here's the original video, um, this green grassy shot, these two green grassy shots was me walking in to the property, the video I originally showed you. Then there's this, this white image right here that is three minutes and 16 seconds and it's a white video now i didn't take that video um you know when we play it you can tell it's it's clearly in my pocket right it's like oh yeah it's in my pocket um there's some audio i think or maybe not um but you know it, it, clearly the phone is in my pocket no big deal right well 316 is an interesting number um you know that's a a, a biblical um, a biblical number, John three sixteen. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I just need to remember what it is exactly. Three sixteen. Um, so, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, 
you know, I'm a believer of all religions, of all faiths, of all people, of good, you know, of light and dark, of the full spectrum, right? I'm, I'm a believer. I'm just a believer in general. Um, but, you know, this is interesting because um, John 3.16, here is a white image 3.16. Um, Whoever shall believe in him, not perish, but have eternal life. So here I am. Now, look at these dark images. It goes black, right? It's like zero, 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 zero. One, two seconds, zero, 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 zero. Interesting. Very interesting. Dark. I was like, whoa, what does that mean? But then it goes into these like colored images, right? There's these more dynamic colors here. And and I was just like really curious. So I start scrolling through it and I was like, wait a second, what are these ones? And I start to see these, what looks like orbs. Now, if you guys are familiar with orbs in the, in the discussion of like a uh, spiritual photo, like, like some people believe that when you take a photo and you see orbs in like a haunted house or something like that, it represents like a spirit. Well, then I start scrolling down and look at this one right here, this one right here in the center. Isn't that interesting? Clearly, there are some really interesting shapes appearing right there. And what I find fascinating about the center one right here is I showed this to my mom and my dad. And you know what? They both agreed. They said that one in the center actually looks like a fetus forming in the womb. And, you know, I can, they also look like, like these orbs are going into the clouds or, you know, it's an interesting light. So... What was really interesting is that when they said that about those those the fetus comment, what I thought was really interesting was that they when I was there there was actually a um, uh, there was a there was a few uh, burial sites that were children that were not even one year old like they were probably stillborns and and I and I had this this the sadness and I I think I almost cried like it was like like I it was like these spirits from the eighteen hundreds that never got to incarnate and you know who knows who knows maybe one of those were one of us you never know right but so interesting and just look at those orbs they just came out of nowhere. Right. And now notice how it goes from videos and photos. Right. It, it just seamlessly. And these are all in my pocket. I did not pull out my camera during this. Um, and and so it's so but that one right in the middle there. Whoa. Then it starts to go white. And it's interesting how there's this one dark one here in the middle. And then look at these like five seconds, one, one, zero, zero. Now one minute and 13 seconds. That one's an interesting one. And then look here at the very end, three completely white photos. Three completely white photos. That goes from darkness, John three sixteen, everlasting life, all the way down from the dark to the spirits that look like they're going into the clouds or possibly reincarnating into a new body in a fetus. Who knows? We don't know. And then all the way to white. That's, that's purification. That's cleansing. That's angelic. That is purity. That is life. And then here are the photos of the um, property that I had um, been looking at. And, um, and these, these later photos are me doing screenshots to just send to people because I was freaking out. I was like, whoa, but this one's interesting. This one thirteen that I, I, I saw this one and I was like, I immediately was like one thirteen. I wonder if I, I wonder what happened here. So I click on this one. Now keep in mind, you're going to hear me talk. And what's interesting about this is that I didn't, I, I like I was by myself. I, I wouldn't normally be talking to myself, but the one time that I did talk out loud, I said something out loud. I was commenting on a fire pit that just appeared. And I was like, oh, perfect, a fire pit. Awesome. But like, listen up, listen to this. Oh, I don't know if, maybe you can't listen. Yeah, I don't think you can listen while we're recording here. So that's too bad. Um, yeah, it doesn't let you. Okay, that's okay. Um, so bottom line is that this is an absolutely fascinating phenomenon. This is a good omen. This is what we call a, a good omen. And, and I pulled up the, the meaning of the word omen. An event regarded as a portent good or evil. 
right? And, you know, a lot of people, when they think about cemeteries, I mean, I know a lot of people, if you're not a, a skilled shaman or practitioner, the idea of doing a ceremony in a in a space like that could be scary, right? A lot of people believe in, in, in uh, you know, just like, like o- omens or like... Um, uh, 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 I can't think of the word, but for lots of better words, basically, um, people, it's like uh, people can hold a lot of dark energy towards doing that type of work. But when you're working with the widest, purest vibration of pure source energy with a pure intention of healing the planet and healing, uh, spirit and allowing for spirit to fully express itself, um, in the greatest and uh, greatest potential at the highest octave, I believe um, that anything is possible. And um, I want to end this video um, with just something of interesting, similar type of connotation. Another story um, when I was actually had the, the honor of interviewing Dr. Emoto, the famous uh, scientist who um, did some, some work with water and he would study the effects of consciousness uh, on water. And they would put the water in different vials and then they would label it with the different Chinese symbols and then they would put their intentions into that water and it would change the structure, the molecular structure of the water. When they freeze it, the, the crystals become these beautiful geometric snow-like looking shapes, these crystalline looking shapes. And you know they go on to say that if your mind can do that to water, imagine what your mind can do to your body considering we're made of 70% water. So when I was with Dr. Emoto, I asked him, um, you know, I said that we're, you know, I was hosting these ceremonies. This was uh, over a decade ago. I was hosting these ceremonies, bringing people together and we would meditate on the water and say our intentions and our prayers. And he was like, yeah, that's great. And, and, um, he said that, you know, w- water loves music. And I was like, what kind of music does water love? And he said, oh, it loves classical music. And I asked, what about dubstep? <laughs> and he had this confused look in a photo and like, huh? and his, his, his interpreter was like face to palm. And I, I always crack the joke that, that that's the gif of the video. Like if you look at the video, it's like her going like this and his face like this. And I always say that was the moment that I asked what about dubstep, but it's a joke, but I continue. Uh, basically, uh, at one point, he was talking about how there are spirits that are trapped in the ether or trapped in the water and that there are spirits. He said, even in this room right now, there are spirits. And for some reason I felt compelled to ask how I said, I said, can we set them free? And he said, yes, only we can set them free or like it was like it was like we have the ability to set them free i mean in source in oneness god has the ability to you know god is just doing all of it right god is all the spirits god is all the you know material objects you know god is this coaster god are these sunglasses you know like God is the idea of aloha, you know, God is, it just is, right? But then there's these spirits and, and it was so interesting that, that he said that we can set them free. And I wasn't intending on going that direction in the interview with him, but it just, that's where it naturally led. And so put that in, uh, in your, your, your mind and, 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 and play with it a little bit, you know, bring it into your altar, bring it into your practice, bring it into your healing practice. Um, remember that, you know, when we, when we move into these experiences where there are, uh, maybe dark energies involved, or maybe there are, um, you know, scenarios that feel out of coherence or a discordant energy, your in, inner reality, your inner realm is a reflection of the outer realm. And so it's so important to come in, take a deep breath, get aligned in your heart, feel the vibration of your heart, come into coherence, come into alignment with your awareness, meaning purify your thoughts, purify your emotions, purify your soul through the affirmation right now in this moment, my soul is purified right now in this moment, my soul is aligned right now in this moment, my soul is protected, right? You got to do those types of protection fields before doing this type of work. It's important, you know, especially for our subconscious mind because our subconscious mind can be like, Oh no, I forgot to do the 
the purification ceremony before I went into the thing. And now I'm wondering if maybe blah, blah, blah. But no, right now in this moment, purified. I'm here for to do the work, to do the work, to do this higher vibrational work. I'm here with the with the angel army, right? I'm here with the with the fleet. You know, we're here for for source, for pure, vital life force, source energy. So stick with it. Keep going. Keep growing, and keep initiating yourself in your spiritual practice, and and continue to cultivate. Uh, your capacity to act as a practitioner in this realm, in this realm of the quantum, in this realm of three-dimensional holographic uh, uh, vibrational uh, light fields that we are in, this, this vibrational realm of, of what appears to be real, but is, you know, on a subatomic level, very much vibration, very much light, very much energy, it's all energetic, it's all spiritual, and it's all uh, uh, an expression of the divine, and so are you. So don't forget it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If it speaks to you, or if you are working with any practitioners, uh, anyone that's in your um, uh, your accountability group, or people that you work with that are working in the spirit realms, I encourage you to share this video with them. I definitely want to make sure that you know this is known, like this type of work is known, and this proof this proof, like this is like physical, sacred technology. You know, this is like an example of what's possible when we really connect, you know, when we really step up, step up to do the work that that deeper uh, spiritual work. And, you know, before we go into a business meeting, before we go walk the property, we go and we consult with our ancestors. You know, we listen in, we listen up, <laughs> listen up, listen in, you know, you got to tune in to the vibration of the space in which you want to encapsulate your soul because, you know, other souls were here before and there have been ripples that have been created. And we got to make sure that the ancestral twine, that ancestral trauma gets liberated so that spirit can continue to fully radically express itself. So hope you enjoyed this. Sending you all so much love and high vibrations from here in the high life island, Hawaii. <laughs> much love. Peace and aloha.